This is Boxing Tickets NA in association with SB Sports and Chaco. We're here at the home of Potty McCrory. Um, I guess obviously it's two days now since your fight's been announced, but but obviously you probably knew beforehand. Are you still pretty much sort of living in the dream of the moment that it's that it's here? It's it's come so fast. Um, yeah, sure. I like I kind of got this stage last week where I kind of had a choice between fighting for the for a European title or fighting for a world title. Um, and I think after like five years of tough grind fighting fighting on the smallest of shows in Ireland, uh, it, like it was a very nice. Like a very nice choice to have. I guess in, in some ways you 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 were going to be headlining either way. You were you were going to be potentially headlining the Galway card in the same night. Um, I guess probably people with feelings of going. Well, if you're going to go to Galway, you might as well go to Germany. You know, there's probably there's probably going to be a lot less money wise going to probably Germany than it is to Galway in, in terms of money and things like that. And I know from obviously what you've said so far, you've probably about hundred people. It's looking like they're going to go on to Germany for a weekend. Yeah, yeah. I- Freak me, like it, like the amount of people that has reached out and has booked flights is, is like is insane. Um, I think it's a smaller venue of of, of, of around two thousand. So if I bring like a hundred people, they're going to make serious serious noise, and especially drunk Irish men and women. Um, it'd be very exciting. I guess your opponent as well, Leon Bond. He's eighteen and zero with nine KOs. He's he seems to be a bit of a banger, the same as yourself. Although you've you're fourteen with eight KOs. It's a very, very wonderful fight. So as I sort of saying to you there, it's, it's not like you're going into an opponent's backyard where you're, you have a very, very slim chance of winning. This looks like a very, very wonderful fight for you. Yeah, uh, so obviously I was offered the fight. Um, and then I went on and I, I think I had a look. I was told to fight this main event. It's in Germany. It's against an unbeaten German. Um, and Germany's always a tough place to go. So I went and had a look. And, and the more I looked into it, like the more I felt confident, um, and I thought it was the right fight to take. Like even the U title shot, like uh, the French guy Tamba, like he, he he was very good as well. Like he was good. So I think ability wise, it probably didn't make much difference. Um, only now I'm getting a, a shot at a world title. When you sort of look at it as well, like it's not like you were struggling at one sixty eight. It's just an opportunity. He's come at one seven five. It's like it's obviously after this, you know, obviously won the ABO belt. You obviously still have the potential to move back down to 168 as well. It's not like you're you're struggling at the weight or anything like that. No, so the reason why I'm fighting and they have it is because that's where the opportunity was. Not because I don't make like make the weight. Um one sixty eight has always been like my weight and who knows? Uh, I become champion. Um I could stay there with like if it's the right fight or I can move back down. I I, I feel big and strong at one sixty eight, so so, it's it's always going to be an option. An extra eight pound being added on as well. Obviously, I'm really feeling strong. Obviously, that extra bit of weight's probably going to mean an extra bit of power coming through as well. You're probably you're going to be a small, probably light heavyweight. You know, by the time you refuel and stuff into the fight. But but I guess when you're ready to have power in your hands at super middleweight, you're of course going to take up power eight eight pound of di- eight pound of difference upwards. That it's only going to make it an even more devastating performance out of you. Yeah, but so like it's always the risk that the power doesn't move, like move up with you. Um, obviously, like I'm known to be a, a puncher, like a one six eight. I expect one seven five to be just the same. Uh, I've I've always sparred bigger men as well, like and 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 they've always complimented and said about uh, about the power. Um, but again, buns like he's a little heavyweight. I don't think he's a big late heavyweight. Uh, I've looked at some of his fights. Two fights ago, he went in at 170. Um, so I don't think he's a, a massive late heavyweight, which was another factor um, like in why I didn't really mind moving up. But not really, the, like, I think he's going to be maybe a bit physically <laughs> stronger than me. But yeah, 78 pounds could make a massive difference for, like, for me as well. Uh, I, I expect to be punching much, much harder. We've obviously spoken in the past. Obviously, you were getting big fights turned down. Obviously, the likes of Lemieux and 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 obviously Scar- Scardina was it? Obviously, in Italy as well. Do you obviously think that Leon Buns probably maybe look too much into you? They maybe looking at you and going, "You're Irish. They don't really know too much about you. That they they might be discredited." And obviously, you know, you're you're on the back of four straight knockouts. You know, your four toughest fights to date. 
people probably haven't seen what UND has been developing over the last two years as well. So in some ways, this is probably going to be a blessing in disguise for you that obviously Leon Bond's team have underlooked you. Um, but I guess that's what's got you to fight, I guess, at the end of the day. Yeah, I think as well, like for them, they have to get like an opponent like that looks good. They can't just like pull someone out of the air and say, I'm going to like, make him fight for an Ivy Hotel. Um, but I th- like if you look at my five of my last six wins, they're they're all by knockout. Um, and I'd say the Pierban who's boxed who's only been stopped by the best at late heavyweight and super middleweight. Um, I was the first fighter like to stop any of them. If you look at Collins and and Celso Neves and Mickey Ellison. Um, I was the first to stop them all. Uh Leon Bond's never been stopped. I don't think he's ever been hurt, I don't know. But I carry the power. I th- I think they hurt anybody. Um and and yes, I I don't know. They made a made like made the right decision, but I feel like like they made a bad choice in picking me. Obviously, I thought on obviously Conan Box and obviously Jamie and Michael. This is going to be your second fight with them. Did you ever believe when you were going to sign for Conan Box? And firstly, you're obviously going to appear in mixed undercard at the SSE, and now you're obviously going to fight for the ABOLA heavyweight title in Germany. I guess it's probably the dream start you're obviously having with Conan Box. Yeah, yeah. It, like it's been brilliant. I work very close with Jamie, um, and we get on very, very well. As we said, it was either this or topping like my first bill. Um, so the opportunities from from sending with him, I think it's been brilliant. And I, like the rumor mill is, there's much more planned. Um, if I come through this, if I come through it, like on Skiv, there's a good chance I'll be fighting on the Colin Lurkar, which is expected to be around the 10th of December. Um, and then they're talking about a Galway show in January, another show maybe in March. So Colin Boxing is going to be very very busy. It's full of the top talent, and and I feel now it's. It's the place that I belong. You obviously won this won this title obviously in Germany nearly effectively. Like me and Sean McComb funny spoke obviously um in the SSE that night and obviously saying, you know, you deserve now four or five thousand in SSE yourself. You obviously won this belt and come back home. You nearly deserve your own headline show in Belfast. Yeah, like if I go and do that, I'm definitely gonna be they got that level. Um as I say there there seems to be a big crowd that's travelling to Germany. Uh and and if, it's like each fight is becoming bigger and bigger for me. My profile is getting bigger. Um, I'm taking people out. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, yeah, I, I I definitely think if I go to Germany, win the title. Um, there's not there's a there's like a potential of maybe linking up with with a promotional group, um, and then wanting to come back to Belfast and. Like so, there's there's loads of opportunity. This this fight brings me loads of opportunity, and like it's a risk. Like I'm moving up, but if I go there, I can definitely come back to Belfast, and and you can look at the SSC, no problem. I think. Yeah, sort of speaking, the end of Kakachi yesterday. Obviously, he fights seven days time for obviously the IBO belt at Super Feller. Obviously, two weeks after your fight as well. Obviously, Dennis Hogan's going to be fighting for the IBO belt. We're pretty much going to have to call us rather an international burger boxing organisation, the Irish boxing organisation, because he's, he's all seen to be, it just seems to have come from nowhere, obviously I know James Tennyson fought for, fought for it, obviously in his last bout before he retired, but Tyrone McKenna was supposed to be fighting for it recently as well, so it just seems to be that the IBO is now the Irish Boxing Association. Yeah, the IBO, uh, it's definitely they becoming like something that people want to fight for now. Um, if, if you look, like recently, Eubank was holding it, Joshua was holding it, like... Triple G, Triple G, the big fighters are now starting to fight like for the IBO again, um, and it's good to see plenty of Irish, the Irish fighters get a chance. Um, starting off with Ando next week, I spent a, a, a full camp with Ando, and I seen firsthand like his true talent, and and I I think he's going to win the fight. I, I've watched a bit of Magnesia, Magnesia. Yeah, I watched a bit of him, and I think he suits Ando to the ground. Um, aggressive come forward fighter, Ando's a great boxer. And, and he punches really hard as well. Um, so, firstly, I'm going to wish him all the best. Uh, and secondly, I, I think he's going to do it. Um, and then Dennis Hogan fights Sam Eglin, who, who's a very exciting fighter. I think it's going to be a great fight. Um, and again, it could be another uh, a second belt come back to Ireland, and then it's all down to me. Uh, we're going to Germany, and it'll be 3-3, three and three, I think. 
That'd be crazy, you know, like, they think of what was the last world title we had was, what, 2019, I think, TJ Dehaney um, lost, obviously, his world title, and, and now three. Um, was it WB... IBF, yeah, IBF he had. Um, but obviously they bring three world titles back to Ireland in the space of just over a month. It's crazy, you know, they always say, you know, you wait for a, wait for a bus and two come at once. Obviously we wait for a world title long enough and we're going to get three just over a month. But, but I guess that goes to show the conveyor belt's been building. You know, you'd have probably never thought when you turn pro that you're obviously going to fight for a world title and, and here we are five weeks away. Yeah, um, Irish boxing's thriving at the minute. Um, it's... it's I, 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 and I think there's much more fighters that can get to this level as well. Um, at the start of my career, it was like, let's see what happens. And I just kept being working hard and plugging away, staying consistent, um, sticking with it. And I like, like, if I can get here, I like, I don't think there's a reason why, 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 much more Irish fighters. Like, I, I think they can do it as well. Um, but they well said something, and. It's kind of like it's making sense. Like, I have like outlasted everybody that I've been like sort of amateur with. Like, like if you leave, like, like, even look at like Troy McKenna, he's stuck with it, he's kept going. He's had a couple of defeats against very good fighters, but he's still on the verge of some massive fights and some and making serious money. So it's just about sticking with it and staying consistent, I think. Um, and it's shown now that the talent in Ireland is getting much, much better. Is it obviously a good blu- blu- blueprint for people to have? And obviously look at what you've been through. You know, you you know, people always used to look at it and go, you have to go through the small horse circuit before you can get somewhere. Like I can obviously remember you won and oh and a couple of fights falling through. And, and then obviously your, your knockout one in the Devonish sort of got, got you that first sort of springboard up. And, you know, fair enough, yes, you made your debut in Ryan Burnett's undercard, but it sort of gave you that taste of what you wanted. Is that the sort of blueprint that you should say a lot of other fighters could follow? It's no, no matter what happens, just keep focused, keep grinding, keep working hard, and you'll get what you're, you're meant to achieve in the sport. Yeah, like these things didn't happen by accident. Like, like, like around that time, the guy was grinding, like not only like in the gym, but also making the right context, uh, speaking to the right people. Like, I was networking, and I was getting the, like, to speak to the right people. Kind of. My, my my third fight was kind of like it was like a trial fight nearly it was like let's see how you do we'll see how much tickets to sell we'll see like how you perform and I went out and I put a guy like completely asleep I sold massive tickets there was loads of noise made and and, and then and then I got an opportunity to sign with with uh, um, Jamie and so forth and it's just it's just rolled from there I've kept grind my fans have kept showing up which helps Get the opportunities to fight like on the big bills, but um, it's it's kind of like like the young me like probably would have like walked away, but I matured, um, and I stuck with it, and I, I think that's been a massive part of it. Just just sticking with it, keep grinding, keep grinding, and 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 now the fruits of my labour like is paying off. What does a one on the twenty second of October do for you? I guess obviously again, I think I guess it's 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 going to be a dream come true sort of thing. But do you think that obviously because before your last fight, I was sort of saying you're only starting to get your confidence. You sort of downplayed your own ability. What does obviously a one on the twenty second of October do for you? Does it take you to that next level? I guess you then have options of whether one six eight or one seven five. Obviously, you have a young family as well. I guess it puts you in the map. You'll never have to buy a pint in Belfast again. <laughs> yeah. Um, it puts me among like the elite sort of like the fairest come Ireland. We like we don't have lo- loads of Irish champions. We're gonna have three in three weeks, so so <laughs> it's gonna probably double in size. But uh, yeah, uh, it it'll be massive for me. Something that I was speaking to Jimmy like the other day about it, and uh, and like like there was something like he said that that gave me loads of confidence, and he probably doesn't even know he he was like the IBO title. Like it isn't the end goal, and I was like, right, okay. Like sometimes, like like words mean like means more, like than you actually realise. Um, and I'm kind of at the stage now where if I win this fight, like it's not the like like it's not the like the big goal. I like I'm just gonna keep going and keep going. Maybe we're doing the one six eight again, challenge for a European title or challenge. Like there's there's loads of opportunities, and this opens a lot of doors, a lot of doors. Um, and a lot of people's gonna know. No, the game the real deal now. 
It's it's the same sort of thing. I remember Carl Frampton obviously saying something something recently. That was obviously saying about you know people not bringing anything out of the sport. I know obviously one of your dreams is obviously owning your own home, obviously be able to pay it off and everything else. This is obviously getting you closer to them dreams. Obviously, it's providing for your family for the future. You've obviously young kids that yeah. they'll be going to higher education, and everything else. Is this now where you're sort of thinking not just for your? You've never thought for yourself, but obviously thinking for them for the future and going. Let's get a lot of money. Let's keep winning fights. Let's keep hungry. You know, and and see how far your talents take you. Yeah, like I'm probably one fade away from like securing like my own house. Um, I've been here now eight years. I'm a pen and mortgage on it, uh, so it would be lovely to be able like to pay that off, um, and that's always been like my like, like my main aim. Um, but five years ago, like when I <laughs> I signed pro, I didn't have kids. Now I have three kids, and the potential to make like enough money that they like, maybe invest in Nemans or 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 mine and their future. Um, it it makes things in the gym like a lot easier. Like, like when things get hard, I think of why I'm doing it. I see them and, um, and I have a chance. I like I'm not far away like from achieving my first goal and much more. Well, look, well, obviously, thank you very much for your time. Obviously, five weeks from now and the new. Yeah. Um, thanks for your time, Paddy, and I'm sure we'll catch up with you soon. Yes, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers.